this Saturday morning. Hope everyone is having a good start to the weekend. This live video is with Connor, who is the founder of Noggin Sport. And the idea of these different episodes are just to give you the real behind the scenes of running a business, real life, truths, challenges, mental health, everything combined, and hopefully just to inspire you a bit about what it's really like and also to talk to other founders just to get their insight and it's just nice to have a conversation offer a little bit of encouragement for everyone so i'm just going to add in connor now But also this is going to be exciting just because me and Connor actually went to school together. So this is a nice catch up as well. Hi, Connor. <laughs> How are you doing? Thank you. Yeah. yeah, good. Thank you. It's been so long. <laughs> um, right. Yeah, I was, gonna say, I was just saying how we, well, we obviously went to school together, so it's, it feels like it's been so long and then we've both gone on these like completely different journeys, but it's so nice that we can touch base and talk about these things. Obviously following your journey as well, like, I know we haven't spoken much in school, but um, great to see you doing so well, see, like you're doing really well from what it looks like on, you know, from what I, I really Oh, sorry, I can't actually hear you. I don't know if it's speaker-wise, but... Let me see if my Wi-Fi is working. Mm. Sorry, I actually can't, I can't, I can't hear what you're saying. Shall I try re-adding you or something? I don't know if it's the live or... No, I'm just not getting anything. Can you hear me? You can hear me. I can't hear you. Um, okay, let me try and... Okay, so we can hear me, but we can't hear you. If you try, if you leave... Actually, wait, you can hear me. So if you leave, I'll try re-adding you, because maybe it's just like a... I don't know, connection, something. Okay, let's try again. Hello? Oh, hi, yep, can hear you now. Oh, there, yeah. Oh, there we go, yeah, that's better. I know, I was like, I could see your lips moving, but I was like, no, nothing's, nothing's coming. Um, but I was going to say what we say. Oh, yes, yeah, so of course, like we've seen each other kind of like start up these different businesses. And like what I think you were saying before, like I've always watched with awe, like your growth, obviously from the outside, I've not seen exactly what's been going on. So I think what you've done and built is incredible. And that's why it's really nice to be able to like hop on and talk about things, because I'm sure from where you're sat, you're thinking, oh, my God, if, you, if only you knew what like, it all took. So I think like, it would be good at first for you just to introduce to everyone Noggin Sport because it would be good to yeah, just let everyone know. Um, I'm one of the co-founders of Noggin Sport um, with my brother. We founded it back when I was at university back in Belfast. So my, my journey is a bit different. To, uh, I kind of, when I left Gabby I, um, at, at school, we, I then went to play professional rugby in Northern Ireland in Belfast, but at the time I, I was studying as well at, at Queen's University. So um, my brothers, like we did like Dragons Den kind of program, and we were both studying business and uh, came up with this idea of linking um, mental health and sport. So I think at the time we were, my brother was going through a tough time at university, um, kind of bounce of depression really, like, and that was 
the main driver why why we we set this up. We we, we both we both playing professional rugby at the time, and in in sport in general, I think there's a there's a that guys this macho stereotype that you have to be always tough. You have to be uh, always you know be, be, be strong, and, and that that is my thing. Especially we found you know the, the things that for you to be successful in sport, they have to go right for you. Mm-hmm. The, the, and stuff, you know, people go through so many different things in their lives, and I think we want to link the two together. Mm-hmm. And, yes, yeah, so that, that brought us into creating um, this community interest company um, that was uh, promoting awareness through the selling of uh, initially it was a clothing range, and then we moved into custom headwear for mm-hmm. sports clubs, um, businesses, um, and kind of reaching out to the community to try and promote the message of, of mental health as, as best we could. Um, so, yeah, and that we kind of went, it, it, honestly, Gabby, we started as like a, a little project, I suppose, and it, <laughs> like snowballed, it literally just snowballed into something a bit more. Um, obviously, we were playing rugby at the time, so it, it was a lot of, st- I'll go out training, I'll come home and be really tired. I'm not selling a sob story here, but it's just, <laughs> And coming home to um to then work on the on the business and it it was it was years if I'm being really honest until we got into a strong position but um yeah that's kind of my our, our story and it's true like you said it always seems to start as a bit of a passion project and you're kind of like oh it will be fun like yes this is such a good idea that you don't well I mean like I didn't think of the fact that like where I live doubles up as like a logistics warehouse and I just had rows of nut butter that like then yeah you go somewhere you come back and you're like okay so now I need to pack this and this let's buy some more jiffy bags let's get some like it the little things that you just don't think about actually happening like you have to do and like you and your brother you don't have anyone else to rely on I guess in the early days because where like who you're the ones that are kind of driving it. You can't just reach out and say like, oh, I'll just pay like this person and they can come in and do everything. So it's, yeah. I actually off as well. Like, that's, that's probably the hardest thing. Like you're always thinking, oh, you know, I've, I've got this in the back of my mind. Like, whereas I, I have this discussion with similar uh, to me, like we went to our school actually, have set their own businesses. And, you know, the thing about, I have this thing where like, I sometimes wish I just, I just work for somebody else, and and then I just when I get nine to five. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I honestly feel the same, and I'd even say like in the past few months, like just as recently as that, it gets to a point where you kind of think, I know I see all these things of like hard work pays off, like keep going, like just don't give up. But sometimes you have to think, it's like that way up of like I love what I do, like I, like you, you love the product, you love the the mission, the like ethos, you know, everything, what it's doing is so like rewarding. But then when you actually look at the like sustainability of it, like I just sometimes think like, would I be happier if I knew that I like went to work, I had colleagues, (laughs) like I I worked with people, that would be nice. Or I then leave and I could potentially switch off. I think it's that ongoing, like you put so much into it that it's really hard to, find that balance of like is this what I want to like keep kind of like persisting and hustling at for the next what five ten years knowing that it's all outcomes are a risk like you just don't know what's going to happen on the other side so yeah I think it's it's difficult (laughs) when when things are going well like it is it feels for me it was amazing and things that you know you feel like progression you know you're going in in where you want to be and what the brand Mm. wants when things are like not going so well, you're like uh, those self doubts are like in your head thinking, uh, "What what alternatives to the moment?" And even well, I think me and my brother are wary of that as well. Like we both, you know, in, in five years time, you or you know, three years time, you don't know how you feel like you might something another opportunity might come up, mm. and you've learned from what you're doing can really help you in another project. And I think you know, not, yeah, you you want your your brand to be really successful. But um, I'm, I'm always oh, it's not the end of the world, but you know, it be a bit of reality as well. Mm. Like things really uh, change very quickly. For, for yeah. Care. 
yeah and definitely i think like what you said i think even mental health wise it changes very quickly you could be on a high because things are going really well but then you could wake up one week and think actually like i don't know yeah like i I actually feel a bit overwhelmed or like comparing to other brands which is like sometimes too easy to do and you think oh my god if i'm not there like i need to be doing more and it's that constant i don't really know how to get to here but i want to but i don't i'm tired (laughs) where do i go (laughs) <laughs> um right yeah but you, you know you're your own boss so you, you're the boss so you have the conversation with yourself do you know what i mean mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it's like that pressure as well because it's like you said it's you're the one that kind of puts those parameters in place of thinking like today we need to do this but then if you don't it's that like like you that self-doubt of like oh like what what can i do then to to change this but it's it's always kind of like playing with yourself <laughs> about um the, the mental health side of thing like so I've, I've, I've played rugby for like 10 years now and so i've got all these scars on my face but um i i uh so i had this year basically i had a year out um not my my um basically in september so that i basically had a season of not of not playing oh, um, and uh I, I basically took the time uh, and just just had to like I didn't. I didn't want to. Fail. I didn't want to do rugby. To be honest, I was in the headspace for it. Mm-hmm. And it, I lit, to be in, do that, you have to be quite. Oh, this is what I want to do, and I'm really committed to it. And I just wanted time with, with my family, really, and and it gave me time. Then after, uh, you know, it's, it's still tough, but it's given me something to focus on, like full time with the business, and that's uh, really helped me. But so what I, what I was going to say was, it's like that that time where you're alone all the time. My brother. Mm-hmm. Actually, going. my brother plays rugby in America. Oh, wow. Over there, like, we have, um, you know, Zoom calls and stuff. The time difference, it's like really messy. It's a bit like early in the morning. So it's not really the same. Yeah, I think you might Oh, no, your sound's gone again. Wow. Oh, you're back. You're back. Got me? Yeah, sorry, you're saying, um, yeah, your brother's playing, so you're doing Zoom calls because he's in America. So I had time away from, from uh, rugby this season because of my, my mum passing away. I then uh, had just working by myself, and that, that was, yeah. that was a lot. in a rugby team, you have all these guys around you, like 30 blokes, so, you know, you go into the changing room and they all take the, take the nick out of each other. But when you work for yourself, it's like, oh, it's really lonely. Like, I'm stuck mm-hmm. like and, you know, I want to do more stuff where I get out into the in the community and, and get to know, get to meet people that are wearing our brand that are supporting us. It's that as well, like spreading the message of what we're doing. But um, it's the loneliness of entrepreneurship, Gabby. I don't know. I don't know how you feel about that, but it's, it's, it's no one really talks. And that I think is also why I want to do these conversations because I do at the moment. I I work alone. Like I don't. I can have a day where I'm like. I don't know if I've spoken today <laughs> like I don't and I have like recently joined a co-working space because I thought you know what Gav's like let's get out try and make friends but even there it's quite difficult just to be like oh hi how, how's it going like I'm Gabby <laughs> like just, without sounding like who is this girl um but sitting with thoughts it's like I feel it is my biggest weakness because I overthink I think because with business you naturally overthink because you're very ambitious you know where you want to get to but then you can also go the other way of like I just tend to like sometimes like yeah beat myself up if I'm not doing more or like doing what like the other brands are doing like I find it really hard to think if they've got into x retailer why haven't I and if if I haven't like it's down to me to get there so it's sitting with that is difficult but like what you said I think I've like over the past couple of years tried to just really work on myself to to kind of like try and become like a better person at managing my thoughts because if I do continue with like down this path it's I think it's still going to be quite lonely for a while but I, I, I actually heard on a podcast the other day and they were saying how we always see loneliness as a negative and I think it does have that like negative connotations but also having that time of solitude is the most empowering thing you can do for yourself because a lot of people tend to busy themselves by 
if they feel a bit lonely or they're running away from feelings, they go out, they make plans, they just like, they keep kind of like, keep going, keep going, keep calm, carry on all those quotes and things. Whereas sitting with yourself and just thinking, I'm going to embrace the solitude and like, what am I actually thinking? You then conquer more challenges because from that you, you start to think, actually, I can use this to my advantage. If I feel like this, maybe I can do something else that I, that will make me feel good. And we then learn from that to keep growing. And I think that helps in like all areas of life, but also business. That, that makes a lot of sense. I, that's how I really feel at, at this moment where I've, I've got to experience a lot of time by myself. And it's like exactly what you're saying there. Like you have moments of clarity where you probably, if you're with people all the time, you're keeping yourself really busy. You can't think about stuff really. Um, and it's not just sitting in a room in a, in a dark space. <laughs> Like, you know, writing, I, a massive thing about, I write a lot of stuff down, how, how, how I'm feeling. And journaling as well, I quite, yeah. I like on paper and it, it just helps me express myself a little bit more. And then, mm -hmm. once I'm like, wow, that was a, you were in a weird headspace to be writing that kind of stuff, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? It, it, I think it's a really good idea what, you, what you're doing here, where you're interviewing people. Um, because, I don't know, I don't know about you, but I follow a lot, a lot of different entrepreneurs, and that makes you, like they all they all over the good side. Like they only show like the highlight. Oh, how well, this is doing fashion, fashion brands especially. Like they're gonna, it's it's always you know it needs everything needs to be perfect, and mm -hmm. uh, the, the shipping crisis has made that the you know there's a delay of, of three four weeks or you know stuff like that where you're thinking. Oh, Pulling your hair out, kind of thing. Mm. I've got the habit of, of get, unfollowing a lot of those people because it doesn't make you feel good. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like cleansing from like the brands that you just think, no, this is not playing well. And I think, like what you said, like I find it, and I know this is probably my own insecurity, but I actually don't like following big entrepreneurs even because I think. I think I just feel a bit bitter <laughs> that they're at this point of like super success. So they're at a place where they're like, how did I do it? And I'm like, I haven't done it yet. Do you like, I haven't made it yet. So like them talking retrospectively, I'm like, of course you can reflect because you're in this kind of like elite space. I was like, what about the other half? Like what about us right now? Where like we said, I don't know if Nutblend will exist in a year. I don't know. It's nobody can tell. And this is the space that we don't talk about because a bit like like I actually I would say I'm guilty of like on Instagram our Nutblend feed probably does look quite visually appealing it looks nice we've got like some followers but behind it I'm like I yeah I find like being that like loneliness and the pressure and wondering like how to get from A to B is more of my reality than what people see and like that is just not spoken about I was like, I came on, I was like, is that, is that social media's fault though? Because the, the entrepreneurs mm -hmm. get more views and, and all, and engagement, and that's why they're, that's why they're doing it. But yeah. is it, you know, going to show you a, a different, they need, they want the alg algorithm we always talk about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I don't know, it's, uh, it's, I think it's really interesting. Or, the other guests you have, you know, they similar kind of stories to ourselves, and probably similar things come out. But it's, if you're a, if you're a person starting your business, interesting to speak about. Mm -hmm. And like even because um, I know you're really good. In fact, like I was going to say, your reels and your content is incredible. Like I actually, I'm like, okay, I need to start doing more reels, <laughs> and I'm like, I'll start next week, <laughs> and I just can't, I can't get to it. And like even like TikTok. I haven't even got the app. I'm just, I'm just not there yet. But like, I see how like, you're so good and natural at just doing these videos. And a bit like that, yeah, like social media in some ways is so good for being able to like get you out there a bit more and actually like talk about your messaging more rather than just like a solid post. But I do think social media has, they can go the other way where they've made it also more difficult where maybe you don't have like a social media manager and digital marketing manager to manage now all these new areas. Like, I feel like these these conversations are probably like the most advanced I've got so far. 
is what annoys me so much. You, you think you're doing really well on, on, and things are getting, you know, your, whatever platform you're working on is like doing really well, that you understand what, what's working. And another thing comes out, <laughs> the other one bad is the, the, the algorithm kind of changes and it's just like, well, now I'm looking for this and just that constant thing is about being able to adapt and like, you, I don't know if that's how it looks to you, Gary, about me being on social media, but that's not <laughs> You'll, like I'm, I'm get so like I'm like massively like imposter syndrome about even even the brand really. I just I don't I'm massively. If someone asks me what I do, I I'm like oh I'm, I'm taking my time out from rugby, and I don't really talk about the brand because I'm I'm just like oh but that's a, that's a, a me issue. But actually, that, I feel exactly the same. I like I totally get that. Like when someone. Sometimes if I go to an event where I don't know people, I don't want them to ask me what I do. And I think like with you, you probably have explained, like, you get a lot of questions off the back of it. Cause it's quite random when you say like, I do, I set up a business in whatever like subject you chose. It, you send people suddenly like, wow. And sometimes I'm like, I don't want to talk about it. Cause I, I sometimes just feel so, I don't want to say unsuccessful, but I just feel so like, no, I haven't, I don't feel, I haven't got to that level of feeling like I can celebrate it as a positive. I'm, I, I just kind of don't want to even mention it. Do yeah, like, you think you'll ever be, this is what I think, I think, when will I ever say, like, okay, I'm really proud of this now. And this, mm. this. Want more, you always want to be something mm -hmm. else. Kind of, but, um, it's, a, it's a good journey you've been, we've been on and uh, the ride's been fun. Yeah, yeah, I was just gonna say, because like one of the biggest questions I was gonna ask is, would you say that in general, running a business makes you happy? Uh, incredibly rewarding, I think, do something where, the, the biggest thing for me, Gabby, I don't know how you feel about people um, having, buying your product and using your product, like, for us, it's like, when people wear our brand and we get messages of someone saying like, you know, I put on your hoodie. Whenever I'm feeling really low, I put on your hoodie, and it makes me feel like connected to the community and and stuff like that. It it actually like melts my heart. Mm, I was just gonna say that is so nice. But with like that, like, it really makes me feel special. Or, you know, there's a lot of rugby clubs or where someone in the team has maybe put their own life, and and the club has we want we want to make some hats for this for this person in memory of this person, and that 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 that's what. Mate, it, that makes me it, like it invigorates me, to, like it motivates me to like keep going and like, well, you know, this is this is doing some good. It's not it's not just um a brand. It's it's helping people. And it's making people feel, feel close to community and connected. And I'm sure you feel like that with 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 your products as well. Like when people use your, use your products and tell you about it, you're like, oh wow, like that that feels great. Mm. Yeah, because yeah, it's like that figuring out whether yeah like that when that high comes in you're like this this definitely outweighs the lows and then you get to that point where maybe like a few more lows happen and you're like i just need another high like i need someone to tell me something now i know i think it, uh, it doesn't make me happy i think it does i think it does I, i've really enjoyed the journey and i think as i said to you at the start like it, in all that if everything else fails and in a year's time noggin's no more like i think the journey we've been on it, the, the, one of the, I just really, I've really enjoyed it personally. Starting something from nothing, um, it, it's special, and it should like you can go and, as you said earlier, like you can go and work for another company, but it's not your company. Ultimately, it's, it's to do something like that. It's, I think, even you, whatever you do in Nutblend, is like it's amazing that you've done that and and create something that people will use all the time, and you'll have customers. Have to, they want to buy your product and it starts from nothing I think is amazing mm. yeah it, you know, it's a funny it, it is a funny thought but um, yeah and when you kind of think like yeah it's just it didn't used to exist I always find that reflection bizarre like with not thought like nobody like that literally did not exist and like you have uh, yeah I think that's it's like a crazy concept like how how have we got here um but like talk, so do you have any like relatable words of advice for others, potentially startup, even anyone in self-employment, but really I'd say like the like granular, um, yeah, like inspiration 
than what we might see on social media. I would, um, you know, we said, I'm trying to set their own businesses, they're doing it as a side and sort of similar. You know, that's why I kind of started, it was like a, a part-time thing I did in the evenings. Uh, I think that's it. You probably need, you obviously need the, the financial stability mm -hmm. of maybe uh, it was, you know, don't be afraid to make mistakes and failure because, you know, Gab, you're talking about not not want to go on the social platforms. But then you might, I would say, well, don't be afraid to make mistakes. I, we, we're always going to make mistakes. We're never going to be perfect. If, you, if you're like that, then you'll learn from it as well, and then you get better. But if you don't make the mistake, you're not able to learn from it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But I, I, I'm going to learn off of the um, entrepreneurs, listen to their stories, listen to how uh -huh. their business come from, what, why, you know, so much things on YouTube, podcasts we talked about earlier, um, and learning from, from them uh, about their experiences, what worked for them, what didn't work. It may be a different, a different brand or a different industry, but there's so many takeaways you, you can get from that. And I think that's really helped me um, realize that business they're all connected in some way maybe something different but you can learn a lot from them so, well th yeah think of us we went to school together like 10 years ago and here we are <laughs> old now <laughs> i know <laughs> i know gabby it's scary yeah. <laughs> <I know. laughs> um and then i think final question so like as we said social media does tend to show this highlight reel and we always can kind of get caught in a loop of thinking they're doing better or i should do more or we see things and think it looks perfect it looks really great if today we stripped it all away so this afternoon 18th of june it's gone would you say that you feel successful as a person uh, um I would say, as a person, I would say yes. I think what, you, what we said earlier about starting something from nothing, um, that, that takes, um, takes a bit of luck as well, if we're, if we're being really honest, but it takes a lot of persistence. And the, the skills you learn in that process, I think whatever you do, even if, if Noggin wasn't or I think the skills I've learned in the process of setting up a brand, the failures we've had, the ups and downs of, of you know, the, the, life, the business life cycle, um, I think I could go and do another thing with it, or I could, I could, the idea came, I feel like I could bring it to market again. And I think that's quite special when you, when you set something up for yourself, you learn so many different things, you know, accounts, marketing, the, the whole range of different, different things in business. And I think that's quite a special, unique um, skill set to have as a, as a, as an entrepreneur. And I think it can be, it can be, um, you use it for lots of different things. And I think that's quite special. Mm. Oh, no, that's really nice to hear. I like how, yeah, it's always like, good to see that you can look back and even through all of the challenges which are difficult when you come to them. And even, yeah, that like loneliness and sitting with yourself all in all. Like that, I think that word as well, special, is really nice. That's a really nice way to think of what the journey's like, that even if it didn't work out, you've come away with so much experience and knowledge and probably become yeah, more wise and like a better person for the future with all the, the journey, so. Yeah. Um, but I was gonna say, well, I was, thank you so much for joining me on this. I've, I think it's been so good to really, I, th I feel like we've like dug in deep as well to the mental health side, which like we said, is just not spoken about that much, especially for the small scale businesses not like the big entrepreneurs who have like millions of followers and whatnot. So I really appreciate your honesty, Connor. And I think it's just, yeah, it's just great to like see and hear more about your journey because I have, I've always seen it, followed it. And I think again, from, from behind a screen, you're doing a fantastic job and you're, you're doing well with the algorithm as well. I assure you. <laughs> I'm well, Gabby. Thanks for having me. I've actually, it's been really good to talk to you. Yeah, you too. And as I say, well, good luck with everything. And hopefully, maybe in six months, we'll do another one of these and we'll be in completely different places. <laughs> All right. Well, as I say, enjoy the rest of your weekend. And um, I hope everyone enjoyed this. So speak to you soon.